Okay, 460, here we go with the UART receiver uh, presented in the context of the UART top. So the top level, we're going to have, of course, the RX engine, the TX engine. What we've done is we've moved our baud rate decoder outside of either engine because both of the engines utilize that information. The number of clocks per bit is used by the TX engine and the RX engine. The half time, K divided by 2 or K shifted to the right 2, is only used by the RX engine. That's why there's no arrow here. We're not using it here. So we're going to use port ID 1 to access the status. So coming out of the RX engine, there's a handful of status bits along with RX ready. And we need to also fold TX ready into that status. So we have a MUX here that when we're reading port or accessing port one, we will see the status on the bus. At all other times, we'll see the read data on the bus. And for now, since this is the only device in our system that is connected to the Trammel Blaze, we'll just tie that directly to the in port on the Trammel Blaze. Eventually, we'll need to put a MUX out here when we have data coming from other sources. Uh, then we take the two transmit ready and RX ready or them together to generate our UART interrupt, which again, outside of the UART, we then have a pulse maker and we have our RS flop to set the interrupt to the trammel blaze. And of course, the trammel blaze interrupt acknowledge will clear the interrupt once it occurs. So that's the top level. This receive engine control path. The brains behind the outfit is the little simple state controller that is sitting in idle, you might say, waiting for the RX line to go low, indicating a start bit. Once a start bit occurs, we go to the next state where we assert start and do it and we're waiting for BTU to occur. Since start is active, we're going to know that it's a half of a bit. And what we're doing is we're tuning the data reception to the middle of the bit that's being sent. So if we still have an RX bit and BTU occurs, we go to the next state. If at any point in time before BTU occurs, we lose RX, we go back to the idle. Here we're doing our data collection. We're going to allow our machine to run. So we're no longer looking for the start, but we're collecting our data and we wait for our machine to indicate that we're done. The control is coming from our bit time decoder is generating the constant for us to determine when the bit time is up. Just like in the previous page, we saw if we're looking for the start bit, we're using half a bit time. If we're looking to collect the data, we're using a full bit time. This is the same as it was on the transmit engine. Then on the bit counter, the difference between here and the transmit engine is now we have different number of bits to collect depending on the configuration. This is new from our discussion yesterday. So address zero will be the data, either write or reading the UART. A write, of course, for transmit. A read, of course, for receive. Address one is the status, which we will read. The format now is the data is in the least significant eight bits. The status is in the least significant eight bits. Bit 0, RX ready. Bit 1, TX ready. Bit 2, parity error. Bit 3, framing error. Bit 4, 
overflow. So we'll see now on the next page how we generate all these conditions. So we start off with our control telling us when to shift. So we shift at every BTU except when start is active because that first bit, we're in the middle of the start bit, we don't want to collect a bit. Then what we're doing is we're sampling the RX line, hopefully right in the middle of the bit time to make sure we get the correct bit. And we may collect up to 10 bits. Once we've shifted them in, or even as it's going on, so be careful where you're looking to see what the data is doing. The shift register always keeps track exactly of how the data is being shifted in. The output of this combinational array will present the same information shifted to the right. So once the data is shifted, coming out from 0 to 9, <coughs> We want to be able to extract out the information from that, be it the 8 bits of data that goes to the trammel blaze, be it the parity generated, the parity select, and the stop bit. So by selecting these, running them through our logic to reproduce the signals, we are able to then derive one, when the RX is ready, so when our machine, when done goes active, in the previous slide we saw it's the bit counter. So when we've counted all of our bits, we set RX ready, which will remain active until the processor reads the data. So we want to hold the contents until the processor reads the data. So reading the data clears the status. It implies in your program you're always reading the status first then the data. So we have our parity error which is only set if parity and error parity enable is active. We have our framing error which is if we are at the end and we do not see a stop bit. And the last is the overflow, which means that the processor has not accessed the data previously, yet we've got another bit in the receive engine. That is the definition of overflow. That means too much information has come and the processor hasn't responded. So that's a brief overview of our UART top now with the RX engine and the TX engine. The details of the RX engine control and the details of the RX engine data path. My encouragement always is be simple in your approach. Don't overly hierarchy whatever your design. Don't have modules for flops. Just write the code. It's much easier to debug. Okay, guys, I do answer my emails uh, and let me know how it's going.